everybody, and welcome back to another review from the Brotherhood of Gaming.com. I'm your host, the way too old for this, Eugene Morris. Well, we have a brand new Shantae game that recently came out, and I'm very excited for it. <laughs> Not that much, maybe. Anyway, is this another fine entry in the Shantae series, or is the franchise showing its age? Let's warm up your dance moves, and here's our review of Shantae and the Seven Sirens. Picking up right after the events of Half Genie Hero, Shantae and her friends are special guests of Paradise Island to partake in the Half Genie Festival. While performing a musical number for the inhabitants, the lights go out and all the Half Genies except for Shantae vanish into thin air. Vacations and video games just never go well, do they? Shantae then begins her rescue mission. She runs into her arch nemesis Risky Boots, the evil queen of the Seven Seas, as Risky is seeking out a secret treasure which is hidden somewhere on the island. Shantae has a lot of work to do if she wants to save her fellow half-genie countrymen, which includes frequent run-ins with Risky, battling huge monsters, and taking on the rulers of the island, the Seven Sirens. The story is done well enough, and is a nice follow-up to the previous game. Not only does everyone stay in their cheery characters, but we also get some more development in their personalities. This is greatly helped thanks to the voice acting, which was a nice touch, whenever it shows up. Unfortunately, this is one of those games where some lines of dialogues are spoken out, and some are not. This may have been for budget reasons, which is understandable, yet no less frustrating. I am more in line with, hey, either fully voice acted or not. It was nice to see the series introduce more half-genies to the franchise, as we did get a small taste of that in the last game with Holly Lingerbane. Unfortunately, we do not get too deep into the new characters' personalities, as they all have basic archetypes, but they still manage to add some lore to the series. With some nice twists and turns, the game's story is another charming tale for the Shantae series. Unlike Half-Genie Hero, however, the gameplay here sees more of a return to the classic style of the first three games, with more of a focus on labyrinth exploring through an interconnected world. With Shantae, you travel back and forth through the island, beating up responding enemies, speaking to NPCs, and getting new powers to unlock new areas for you to explore. A couple things did, however, jump out at me. First, this game does have some pretty long load times that can get rather annoying. It's nothing too damning, but they are noticeable. The other thing is that this game is way on the easy side. This is due to the large drop rate that occurs when you kill enemies. From hearts, health items, magic items, and cash, you name it. Collect these things and visit the numerous shops and you can get maxed out pretty quickly. It did not take me long to buy up all the upgrades to my hair whip and my magic attacks. In fact, through my first walkthrough of Shantae and the Seven Sirens, I only got one game over. And I suck at games. One new game feature here are the monster cards. Occasionally, destroying a monster will cause one to drop for you to collect. You can activate up to three of them at a time to get some upgrades. These upgrades include crawling faster, attacking with more damage, etc. The magic transformations return this game as well. First, there are the animals that you can turn into. These are pretty much used for traveling to new areas, such as a triple jump, water maneuverability, and so on. The animals and how they're used here are pretty similar to Risky's pirate equipment. The dances are used to activate the fusion magic, which you will get once you rescue one of the aft genies. These include finding hitting platforms, bringing to life wilted plants and removing poisons from waters, creating new pathways via an earthquake, and so on and so forth. Again, mostly used for game progression, not so much for attacking enemies. These are activated by the push of a button, so it does allow for quicker gameplay. However, I admit I do miss the different types of dance moves she had from previous games. Also, the forms that she turns into are pretty badass. The game does have a world map which uncovers new areas for you to explore, as well as quick jump transports that you can find at towns to take you to different areas throughout the game. One letdown is that there are secret areas in this game where you can use these abilities to get squids that you can use to increase your health. However, the map does not mark these secret areas down, so if you pass one, the only way you can find it again is by backtracking through the entire game and searching these areas out. This can be a real nightmare for completionists. Overall, it's a pretty standard, bare-bones, Metroidvania-style game, with a few wrinkles here and there. Nothing more, nothing less. For the first time in the series, we do not have the great Jake Coffin composing the music for a Shantae game, and the difference is notable. I'm not saying that the music is bad, but it does trend in a different direction, as compared to the last couple of games. If anything, the music here reminds me of another way forward game, The Mummy Demastered, as it has more of a bit-style flavor to it. Again, this may be another harkening back to the original Shantae game from the Game Boy Color. Unfortunately, there's nothing really memorable here in the game's soundtrack, which is quite a shame. Compare that to Shantae Half-Genie Hero, where there were a few tracks that I'd bump on the regular. Here, though, the music is just straight-up background filler. But it does get the job done. The game's theme song, Rise and Shine Shantae, is performed by Shantae voice actress Christina V, and like always, she does a great job. 
The in-game graphics are essentially a copy and paste from Shantae Half-Genie Hero, as it retains that chibi anime look, which I do find charming. Speaking of anime, the game also features an opening and cutscenes which are fully animated, which is a first for the series. These were developed by the anime studio Trigger, who are behind such shows as Kill la Kill and Little Witch Academia. So if you ever want to see a Shantae anime, well then here you go. For the world itself, I found some of the areas to be quite colorful and fun to look at. However, some other places do have a sameness feel to them, so the visuals were a little inconsistent in that area. The fact that the entire game takes place on an island may have hurt it in that factor since there's not that much variety. Overall, I did find it to be a colorful, if somewhat limited, adventure. So now it's time for the final call. Is this game worth a buy or a pass? It has strong, fun characters with a charming story. Basic Metrovania action with an easier difficulty. Serviceable music and colorful graphics. If you're a Shantae fan like myself, then I say buy it. It does help that it is a budgeted title and not a full $60 price game. If you are new to the series, this may be worth a look as it seems more accessible to new players with its easier setting. But if that's the case, there's really nothing wrong with waiting for a price drop. Shantae and the Seven Sirens may not break out as the best Shantae game ever. To me, Pirate's Curse still holds that crown. But overall, it is a satisfying, if flawed, adventure for fans of the series to explore. Hopefully there will be more DLC content in the future to help enrich the experience, like a harder difficulty mode. We'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. You've been watching the BrotherhoodGaming.com show. Thank you for watching, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. And as always, keep on gaming.